We're ready for the last two chapters. Let's see how this mystery ends, this fantasy, this amazing book of adventures that we have gone through. But let's not forget it's part of a trilogy. So there is another one after this. Chapter 41. I didn't know if it would work, if I could travel to the empty with Al Pooch, but this was my last option. I floated in emptiness, spinning in a void of black, then came a long tunnel of white mist. When I felt a familiar bounce, I opened my eyes. The sea, the pyramid, the jungle were all there, exactly how I'd left them. I sprang into my jaguar paw paws and I made it. I didn't celebrate for long because Rosie's fire burned hot inside of me and because I had heard a sickening hiss come from the inside of the temple, I instinct instinctively crouched. From the moonlit shadows came a monstrous blackish green snake the size of Jazz. And of course, Al Pooch would inhabit the body of the giant snake when he spirit jumped here. Whitish liquid oozed from the from between its scales and when it dipped into the floor, it, it, it turned into maggots, writhering, slimy, disgusting maggots. No wonder why this guy reeked. Little godborn Alpooch hissed as he slid the, towards me. His slanted, slitted eyes blazed red. His yellow flanks glistened in the moonlight. You think you're very smart, don't you? Man, I was hoping he'd turn into a lizard or maybe even an ant. I inched back remembering what Harakan had said. He said that the empty was his creation, made of his power and his magic, a place where other gods' powers couldn't follow. Alpucha's nostrils flared. Do you like my chosen form? A goat would have been better. He reared up, showing me his maggoty red scales of his underbelly. If I had hands, I'd applaud you. Little go godborns, I mean, it was a clever plan to bring me here. His forked tongue flickered like it was sniffing in the air. Is that it? You think you can trap me in this place? Maybe, I said defensively, hoping his tongue couldn't sense my lie. Trapping him here wouldn't be a knife. It wouldn't break our connection. You can destroy the real world from here. I backed up slowly, my senses on fire, but definitely more controlled. Is this what you think? He sneered. That is me and me alone. Do you really believe I'm the only one who wants to destroy your pathetic world? He let out a crueling laugh that echoed across the stone building. You're so naive, just like your father. He thought I didn't know what he was trying to undermine me at every turn, but there's a little secret, Godborn. You've been the catalyst. You are the reason the world will end. I felt like a black sky was pressing on me. What are you talking about? Even if you defeat me, the gods will never allow you to live. They'll never allow a new race of gods. He lowered his head to the stone floor, coiling his tail slowly. It threatens our powers, creates unbalance. So I used you for my own gain. Imagine what a wonderful surprise it was for me to discover that you're not God one. You really think you couldn't detect your father's power racing through you, he paused, as if I thought I would respond, but I had nothing to say to the snake. He continued, those on my side appreciated knowing there was a God born amongst us, but I kept your identity to myself. I claimed I had no idea who your parents was because that would sow mistrust, fighting, and paranoia among the gods. And once I created the little breathing ground, they all did the heavy lifting. I simply had to sit back and watch. So you see, Zane Osbio, you were the most glorious surprise of all. An angry growl erupted from my throat. My back paws came to the edge of the stairs. I took deep breaths, trying to restrict the heat inside my veins that was threatening to explode any second. So Zane, whether you keep me here or not, he added, the gods will kill your father. Do you want to know what happens after that? You turn into a cockroach at midnight. His eyes hardened. You should be thanking me for not revealing your secret, but I didn't do it for you. I figured I'd use those powers for good use because in the end, Zane, they won't help you defeat me. You see, you're a little half-breed nothing now. You needed training, guidance, a god, to teach you, but with your old man on death row and the other gods wanting you dead, the training will be hard to come by. Join me and I'll help you attain more power than you ever imagined. I teetered on the edge of the stairs, thinking that I had had enough. 
of everyone's deals. I've got a better idea. I said, how about you release me and I won't have to kill you. He let out a twisted laugh an inch closer. <laughs> Spoken like a true weakling. One of Harakans is dead. This place will die too. And with nothing left here to trap me, I'll head off into the underworld and I'll take back what is mine. So anyways, you look at it, I win. I crouched lowering, thinking about all the insults the kids had at school thrown me. Uno, McGimster freak, how I'd hidden out at home because I didn't want to face them. Weaklings, I thought about how the gods have been manipulating me this whole time. Little half-breed nothing. Then I pictured all the world who had my back, my family, my friends, both new and old, and how they deserved my loyalty and protection. These thoughts expanded like fire burning inside of me until I couldn't contain them anymore. I knew Al Pooch's blind spot, the one thing he hadn't considered. You overlooking something, I growled. What's that? I am Dane Osbio, the storm runner. I didn't bring you here to trap you, my voice thundered. I came here to kill you. Before I could reach, react, I struck the first blow, launching myself into his neck. We hurled over the step edges, downing, down, down. We spiraled through the middle muddle of thick jungle and black skies. I sank my teeth into his slimy scales. I prayed that he didn't bleed maggots. He did. They poured into my mouth as he screamed. At the bottom, we came apart. Me split, spitting up vomit flavored worms, him coiling tightly, getting me ready to strike. Before he lunged at me, I leaped up and opened his jaws and chomped only air. As I came out of the middle of a spin, he wrapped his tail around the back of my legs and pulled hard, slamming my head against the ground. Shock waves rolled over me. He was too big and strong without his God, even without his God powers. I slashed his tails with my claws still resisting the urge to use fire. I released me and retreated. In one swift move, I catapulted over him and took off running. It was as fast as the lightning shredded the dark sky. Flashes of white lit up the empty. Run, little god one, but I'll catch you no matter how far you go. I heard puke slithering behind me. It would have been so easy for me to go back to the old world and leave him there, but what's the point? One way or another, I would eventually have to face him. Then hurricanes whispered my voice, you have the blood of a destroyer. Destroy him, Zane. Oh, sure, easy for him to say, Mr. Destroyer himself. I didn't exactly take God's destruction 101. I shouted into the night. The fire burned so hot inside of me, I thought I might explode. Al Pooch was only a few feet behind me. His monstrous hiss seemed to be coming from every direction. I didn't stop running. I couldn't stop. There, those trees, small clearing, the rippling air of the voided, was just beyond. I All I had to do was get to the edge and look like an ordinary cliff from here. Increasing my speed, taking giant leaps, finally I reached my destination, spun to face the god of darkness, death, and destruction. Alpucha's giant body heaved, his eyes blazed with so much hate I thought I might swallow me whole. He slithered towards me confidently. I backed up slowly, balancing on the edge of the abyss with perfect precision. It was like walking on the rim of the beast back home. Join me, Zane. I can show you the full extent of your powers. How about I show you my power? He bared his fangs and hissed. You'll always be a pathetic and weak, and you'll always be one step behind. He sprang. All my instincts told me to pivot out of his way, let the mo moment hurtle into the abyss. But to break our connection, I had to be the one to end him. It had to be by me, my hand, or in this case, poor. I held my ground, waiting for the precise moment. I said a silent goodbye to mom and Brooks and Hondo and Rosie. The moment of his razor sharp fangs sank into my shoulder. I grabbed him and launched both of us into the black hole. There was a biting, snarling and clawing, terrible plane radiated through my body. Do you like venom, Al Pouch hissed? I started to black out as his tail coiled around me. We plummeted into the bitter pool of nothingness. I looked up at the moon. It was getting smaller and smaller. Al Pooch constructed further. If I didn't stop him, he'd overpower in a matter of seconds. I let out an ear splitting roar so loud it shook the abyss. Tighter and tighter he squeezed, crushing my ribs, smothering my lungs. I had always hoped my last thoughts would be of something good, like the first time I saw Brooke smile, or way, the way Rosie's brown eyes shone even in the dark. But when you're about to die, all you can think about is not dying, or in my case, how rotten it would be to choke by a giant maggot-breathing serpent in a black hole. The fire will do as you command, 
My skin burned, embers glows beneath the surface. Finally, I released it. Massive flames engulfed me. Alpuch screamed, his grip loosened, allowing me to suck up the huge gulp of air. I slipped my front legs free, then my whole upper body, and with one last roar, I swiped the fiercely claws across his scaly face, slashing his eyes. He drew back. I managed to corkscrew the grip out of his grasp. With all the strength I had left, I thrusted him downward with the power of my back. Adios, puke, I snarled. The last thing I saw was a fire-eaten monster serpent spiraling into the vortex, hissing, I'll come for you. Chapter 42. I woke up lying on a stone slab in the cold dock chamber. There were rusty iron bars on the door and beyond it was a gloomy half, gloomy hall that smelled of moldy cheese. Wall torches cast long flickering shadows across the darkness. The changing of the metal on the stone through the place along with the moans and groans and occasional kill me now, which followed by you're already dead. Crap, was I dead? This had to be Exalababa. As I, as if I summoned her with that thought of Exitab appeared in front of the bobs, holding a piece of paper and a pen, stand in the presence of goodness. I got to my feet awkwardly. What happened? Where am I? Where are my friends? Shut up and listen, she said. You're my pet now. This is your cell. And once you've paid your penance to the gods, you'll join the others in pounding stone one day and night until your bones turn to dust. Penance, I, but I, I killed the sinking one. I cleared my dry throat. Shouldn't that count for something like ill early release or something? She grunted and then slipped the paper through the ears. You will write your pathetic little story on this and it will serve as a warning to all the gods about what happens to those who break the sacred oath and to any human who chooses to defy the gods. Don't try to lie. The paper will know if you are telling the truth or not. Magic paper, great. What would I know if I exaggerated a little bit and if I don't feel like writing anything? You'll be fed to the hellhounds one piece at a time. Hellhounds, was Rosie around here somewhere? Could I at least see my dog at least? She thrusted a pen at me, get to work. I took the pen and the tissue paper. It's kind of a long story, it could take a while. I wasn't in any hurry to stop pounding stone until my bones started to turn to dust. You have one day. She took the flimsy paper. This is just one sheet. I guess you want a Spark Notes version? The paper will multiply as you need it. It comes from Exam Yali. Exam who? The serpent bird. That triggered a memory. He has something to do with the world tree, right? Maybe she should be impressed with my mad Maya history skills. With an annoyed exhale, she said, he sits at the top. You can see all of his creation in the greatest master of sorcery and the magic of this world he has ever known. Right, that serpent bird. I said, just wanted to be sure. My heart sank. This wasn't how it was supposed to end. I'd killed the worst God of all times and this was how? God's thanked me? And what about Hurricane and Brooks and Hondo and Exitab? Turned and walked away. Wait! When she looked over her shoulders, I said, if I'm in Exalabob, does that mean? She gave me a wicked smile. Yes, Zane Osbio, you're dead. The end.